Hello and welcome along once again to Enfield Physics Tutor tries to make difficult physics easy. This question where you have an object that's being thrown at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal and has an initial velocity which I've called x, we're not told what that value is, but that it travels 36 meters before it hits the floor somewhere over here. And we've asked to find the value of x. Now the way to solve this is to consider what it uh, the horizontal and vertical motions have in common and anything they have in common is the time of flight so the time taken to go up and come back down is the same as the time taken to go across till it hits the floor so if we can get expressions for the vertical and horizontal time of flight then that's probably going to be very useful so we'll do that first so let's first of all start off by considering the horizontal time of flight I'm going to call that TOF for time of flight so we know that always speed is distance over time. Now we can use this because the speed horizontally is constant because we're going to ignore air resistance. So that therefore means that the time of flight is going to be equal to the distance traveled over the speed, which is going to be 36 meters. And we need the X component of the X meters per second. So that's going to be X cosine of 30. So there's our first expression for t. So I'll put that into a little box like that. Now let's look and see if we can get the vertical vertical time of flight. Well, what I would suggest we do with that is work out the time it takes to get to the top. And then at the end, we'll double that and that will be the time of flight. So the way to do that is to consider that we know always that velocity equals initial velocity plus a t. Now at the top, the final velocity is going to be zero. So we set that one to zero. The initial velocity is going to be x sine 30. And then we've got to add that to the value of the acceleration, which is negative because it's downwards. So minus 9.8 times t. So let's just rearrange this. If we do that, we're going to get that 9.8t equals x sine 30, which means that t equals x sine 30 over 9.8. But remember, that's only the time to the top. So our time of flight, tof, is going to be two times that, 2x sine 30 over 9.8 and that's our second expression and the two t's in the two boxes there are equal so let's change the pen color and we'll set them equal to each other so that means that 36 over x cosine 30 is equal to 2x sine 30 over 9.8 and now it's just a question of rearranging getting a formula for x equals so let's do some rearranging of the numbers first so that means that 36 times 9.8 now be careful that's a times it's not a value for the velocity divided by 2 is going to be equal to x sine 30 x cosine 30. Now I want to put some brackets around this so we don't get confused. So let's simplify that right hand side. That's going to be x squared sine 30 cosine 30. And now we can take this trig bit down to the other side. So then we get 36 times 9.8 over 2 sine 30 cosine 30 and of course that's x squared so in order to get x we're going to have to do a square root of that when you chuck all that lot into your calculator and press equals and do it a couple of times to check it you get an answer along the lines of 20.2 meters per second now is that correct well yes it is and one way to check is now to reset the problem 
and say to yourself, suppose we start off, I'm going to change the pen color. I'm not going to go all the way through this, but this is just to start you off. So you start off now with your velocity of 20.2 and you then use that value of 20.2 at an angle of 30 degrees to work out the time of flight. Work out how long it takes to get to the top of the parabola and then how long it takes to come down the other side by doubling it. Then you do whatever that time of flight was times horizontal component. That's the word I was looking for, horizontal component of 20.2. And what you'll find out is that you'll get about 36 point meters when you do that.